Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about slug control. Now when you live in a place that gets 120 inches average annual rainfall, you know something about slugs. And the slugs you get in a place like this when you're just right down the road from a rainforest are different than those that people get in most parts of the US and maybe all around the world, I don't know. But at least here, our struggle is very different than what most people deal with. I'm going to be talking about a few different ways that you can control slugs and snails naturally without having to purchase any kind of slug bait. I'll talk about some of this first and then I'm going to talk about what works for us because the stuff that I'm going to list off first that will work for most people won't work here. So let's get started on the list. The number one best way, at least according to the rest of the world, is to put beer in containers so like open containers where this it will draw the slugs in it's got to be deep enough that they can get in there and drown but you want it about at the level where it's easy for them to just to get in there as well but once they get in there they can't get back out and this has been proven to be a very effective way to control slugs in most areas again does not work here i have tried it in just about so many different ways setting up different types of containers setting them up in different ways and it just doesn't work it's again you know it, it's the one that usually when i say anything about slugs it's the first one that people come in and say try this well i tried it years ago i've tried it four years i've tried it in so many different ways and it doesn't work for us but many have said it's very effective for them uh, another thing is if you have the space and the willingness ducks are very effective at keeping your slug population down because it's their favorite snack in fact usually that's the first thing they'll do if you let them go in their garden they will go and look for all the slugs and so, in fact some people do that they'll just even i've heard of places that will actually hire out their ducks to gardens and the ducks will just go in there eat all their slugs and then go back home again and uh you know if that's a, a way that can work for you then great now for us the reason we wouldn't do that is because of our space we just do not have space to have ducks nor the desire ducks are way more messy than chickens and chickens are messy enough and so no ducks for us here. And if you're new, maybe you don't know this, but we're doing, even though we do have another piece of property just up the road that we acquired last spring, uh, it might be a while before we get to a point where we're doing any real gardening out there that's gonna kind of come down the road. We're doing everything right now, right here on this shy one third acre lot here in the neighborhood in town. So we've been making it work here. And I'll be, of course, inserting some pictures, if you're not seeing them already, of our garden. We have gardens all over this whole lot. They're all in different places, making the most of our space. So again, we, we can make the chickens work, but we just don't have space for ducks here. Another method that a lot of people swear by is taking your eggshells and breaking them up and sprinkling them around your different plants. And this will deter slugs because they don't want to crawl across the sharp eggshells and another benefit to that is the eggshells are very beneficial to your soil and your plants because they're going to feed some necessary nutrients like magnesium and calcium straight into your soil which is excellent especially for things like tomatoes however yet again for us it doesn't work slugs here they are Chuck Norris slugs. They'll creep right across the eggshells and they don't seem to care. It does seem to deter them a little bit or at least slow them down, but usually in the end, they get through the, the eggshells and demolish plants. Another good one, which is also usually very good for your soil, especially depending on the plants you're putting it around, is your bended coffee grounds. Sprinkle those on top of your soil around your plants. Again, for us, this helps slow them down a little bit, but it doesn't deter them entirely. 
but it is also a good one to keep cats out of your garden. So if you don't want the cats digging in there, at least for some cats. I've heard some cats don't mind, but some cats really hate the coffee grounds. We had a cat, a neighbor cat that was coming, yeah, years and years ago when I first started really getting serious into the garden and it was uh, making messes over on the one side. So I started putting coffee grounds down and it stopped. It stopped using the potato patch as a kitty litter box. And so it is effective. Plus, the coffee grounds are really good for things like grapes, berries, potatoes, corn, and more. So that can be a good option. Another one uh, that people talk about a lot is copper. Yes, we've tried this as well, but uh, you know, apparently slugs don't like to go across copper because of the electrical charge they get when they go across it. But when you live in a place that gets the much, as much rain as we have, slugs seem to not mind going over copper here it's just it's kind of crazy i know that works for most people but we did try making copper rings to put around some various plants and it was just it just was ineffective for us but many say that it does work putting some kind of copper wire all the way around your garden beds is one way to do it and then if you go the extra step and whether it be copper wire or another type of wire and add some kind of electrical charge to it that will keep the slugs and snails out and we have yet to try that one it would take us a lot of time and likely expense to get all of our garden areas because we have several spread out all over set up where that's going to work for us i could see trying it in a small area but i even see over time that being something where whatever it is you know with the heavy rains that we get i just don't see a setup like that lasting for a very long time out in our weather so even though we haven't tried it uh i think it could work for a short period of time but considering the amount of work and expense that would go into setting it up all over all of our garden areas and then knowing it's not going to probably it might only last a season at most i just don't see that being worth it but again it's something you can look into i've had people send me videos where people set that up and, and they did it for themselves and it worked really good for them so it might be a method you can check into and if i happen to find one of those videos again that one of the ones that somebody sent me a while back i will try to link that down below otherwise just look it up on youtube i bet you can find one on how to do that another one that people talk about a lot is diatomaceous earth and diatomaceous earth is a good one to help with all kinds of pests because uh different anything with the exoskeleton it uh, cuts them up and it dehydrates them and they die and that can work if you're not watering the diatomaceous earth or if you're not putting out it out in a place where it rains because once it's wet it's pretty much useless as far as that goes and plus you want to be careful with diatomaceous earth because you know it is a dust and you want to be very careful because you don't want to harm your bees either so that could be you know that's one of those things you got to really think about me i save the diatomaceous earth for putting in the chickens feed and sometimes we'll use it in pots in my greenhouse because that's one place i can at least control how much moisture gets on the soil some other ones like spices to consider would be you know ground cloves and ground cinnamon these supposedly will help but again this is something to me that i see is quite an expense if you're having to water a lot or you're living in a place that gets a lot of heavy rains it's something that, that's just going to get washed down into the soil and then becomes useless now i do take my different like when i use cinnamon sticks or i'm using ground cinnamon in my teas i will dump the remains herbs and the different stuff that are at the bottom of the teapot i will dump those into my various pots and that does seem to help a little bit like the cinnamon sticks somewhat and so even though they've been uh, used to make tea they do still seem to help a little bit in the pot that's a more frugal way to do it because i can use it for tea first and then use it in the garden and even if it doesn't repel the slugs again it's so it's just more compost i'm throwing in there to help my plants now i'm going to go on to ways that i've used that have been the most effective now when i 
first started my channel, it was either the year I started my channel or the year before. But I do know that the year I started my, my channel, which was 2016, I started in August of 2016. And so I already had a good garden going. So I'm pretty sure that was a year. We had a pretty wet summer, all summer. Now, even though we live in such a heavy rainfall area, and just so you understand, we get three times the amount of rain in a low year that Seattle gets normally. And in a high year, we can get four times as much. So we can get up to 160 inches of rain in a single year. People are trying to understand the difference between their rainfall and our rainfall. All you simply have to do is type into your browser uh, inches of rain for your city and state. So annual average rainfall for and then list your city and state and then you'll be able to pull up some links that will tell you that and then you can compare so ours currently is 120 now it used to be 144 so our actually our average has actually gone down quite a bit but i'm believing what's going to happen soon is we're going to see an incline up again to where we're getting about 140 144 inches average so that way you can kind of compare and get an idea so the more rainfall you get, the more issues with slugs and snails you're going to have because they only like to come out when it's wet. So when we have a drier summer, I don't have as many problems with them. But that year that I started my channel, we didn't have our chickens yet and it was very wet pretty much all summer long. Worst year ever for slugs. And I'm not talking big mammoth slugs, though yes, we get big slugs around here, most of our problems are coming from the little tiny ones, especially them young ones. Thankfully, those are the ones my chickens love to eat the most. But that year, since I didn't have chickens yet and I'd been trying everything by this point, I found the best thing for me to do, and this is a real hassle, but it did help a lot, was I would go out every morning early, just before the sun came up, especially while it was still very cool and very, very damp, and then that's when the slugs were out in full force. And I would just go through the whole garden and start hand picking slugs. And I would count them. And I wouldn't stop until I had a minimum of 100 slugs picked. And some days I'd get 200 slugs or more. And that helped doing that every day. That really helped bring the population down. But I also found another trick during that time that uh, I always forget to mention, and that is simply doing stuff like, if you have a lot of plants that you can top, chop and drop, things that the slugs like. So let's say you've got, well, even dandelion leaves. Slugs will pretty much leave dandelion leaves alone unless you've picked them or cut them and thrown them on the ground once they start to die then the slugs will come eat them and so that can be kind of a bait that's natural and doesn't hurt the slugs so if you're concerned about killing slugs then that's you know that's a way to do it that will draw the slugs to those things and then you can also it also makes it easier to gather them up because they're all in one place and i actually discovered that by accident because i would often do a lot of chop and drop if i had stuff just growing like crazy and it was kind of causing a little bit too much shade or getting too thick i would just cut it down and throw it down on the garden to feed the garden and then i found those were the things the slugs would go to first more than the live plants which i thought was very interesting but it kind of makes sense because there is a purpose for, for slugs, even if they're frustrating. And their purpose on this earth is very similar to what flies do. And that is to, to uh, get rid of some of that decaying matter. So they do serve a purpose, even if they do tend to demolish our gardens. The best thing that we have done is getting the chickens and so what we do as long as we can throughout the year we let the chickens roam all throughout the back garden areas and in the greenhouse and until it's time to actually plant things in the ground so some of you have been watching my videos along this year you'll see that little by little i've been starting to fence off different areas and bringing their roaming area down smaller but the nice thing is i've been able to 
uh, we've been able to make it so that they can roam in the front yard garden for a period of time. And I've been able to extend that out farther too by the way I've been doing different things, such as taking the hanging pots that are very open and airy and then hang it, setting them upside down over my potato plants while they're first starting to come out of the ground so the chickens don't get uh, dig them up. I may even be able to allow the chickens to stay out there longer because once those potatoes get to a certain size, the chickens won't dig them up and I'll be able to take those pots out of there and then maybe use them to put over my zucchini plants when they start coming up and some other things that I don't want the chickens to dig up. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep them roaming around out front as long as I possibly can. That, it, we'll see how we can make that work. And plus that gives them more bugs and slugs to eat as well and keeps them healthier. But the chickens are great, especially if you teach them when they're very young, like when you get them when they're chicks and you cut some, you know, when you when they get big enough that you feel you can do this, take some slugs, it's gross, but just kind of cut them into little pieces and then feed them to the chickens. Give them a taste for it. Usually they won't try to eat a whole slug if they haven't tasted it first. And that's what I did with mine. And most of them will, I, I don't know about my black chickens because I never did that with them, but all my uh, buff Orpingtons will eat the little tiny slugs. They'll tend to leave the bigger ones alone. They're not, some of them will eat the bigger ones, but they're not as crazy about them. Getting them to eat them while they're young and eat the eggs that they dig up out of the ground does definitely reduce a slug population incredibly. So if you're going to get chickens and you prefer chickens over ducks, they do, they might not eat as many slugs as ducks do, but they can do a great job, especially if you can teach them to eat slugs. I just have been amazed ever since we first got our chickens, just the difference in the slug population on our property. And then as a last resort, there is, and people were asking me about this in my last garden update, and I didn't, I just didn't think to mention what it was, but I learned about it from, because I was staying, trying to stay away from slug baits and anything unnatural, especially toxic. Years and years ago, I used to use slug lime, but that, that is so dangerous, especially if you have pets or if you're using it out in a place where any wildlife can get to it. It is very toxic and they will eat it and it will kill them. So uh, this one though, Sluggo, this one I found out from a couple of people locally that use this because it is actually, and I didn't know this until they told me, I just always overlooked this, assuming it was toxic like any other kind of slug bait, which is not toxic to humans or to your pets or any wildlife. In fact, I sprinkled some in a place one time that I thought the chickens couldn't get to or I just wasn't thinking because it was in a pot and they stuck their heads through there and ate every little piece out of that and I was kind of freaking out even though I knew it was supposed to be safe well they were totally fine it didn't hurt them one bit so it's just toxic to the slugs so you sprinkle a little bit of this around it's just little white pellets around your different plants and the ones that they're most likely to eat and what they'll do is they'll go to that they'll eat that and then they won't eat anything else they'll go back into their little hidey hole and then they'll die. And so you should see a great reduction in that. Now, I found for me when I bought this, I can't say what it's like now because things have changed so much and prices have skyrocketed on a lot of things, but I found it cheaper for me to actually get this on Amazon because I could get a bigger amount than I could locally. And so it had a better price per pound on it or per ounce. And so this one is, this is two and a half pounds. I think the one I got, it was about a, a pound and a half and the one I got locally. So this one ended up being just a little bit better price. I will go ahead and link to it below if you want to check it out. It is actually approved for organic gardening and you know, it's not cheap like anything else, which is one of the reasons I don't like having to use it. I would prefer not to have to depend on it, but um, a container like this should last me several years because I only use it in places where either A, the chickens can't get to, or it's hard for me to figure out where the slugs are coming from to be able to get them or whatever, especially when you're talking young plants. Once the plants get to a certain size, I don't worry about them so much because the slugs can't do a whole lot of damage. And usually by then the weather's dry enough that we don't have as much problem. But if you'd rather not spend the money on something like that, then go back and consider some of the other methods that I mentioned at the beginning, because they may work for you just because they don't work for us doesn't mean they won't work for you because a lot of people swear by these methods from where they're at. 
Sadly, they don't work for us because we just have, like I say, we have Chuck Norris looks. <laughs> they are tough, but they can't outrun the chickens and they're not tougher than them. So thankfully for that, we have that. So, all right, well, I hope you found this video helpful and I answered a few questions. And anyone else that has some great ideas that works for you, uh, go ahead and throw those down below so other people can read your comments and just get some ideas of the best ways that they personally in their area can deal with their slug and snail population. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.